Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at the DICE version of a bigger game that I'm a fan of, Istanbul. This is Istanbul the DICE Game. This one takes some of the concepts from its bigger brother and wraps them all around the use of dice. You are going to be rolling those dice to generate resources, uh, generate actions you can take basically, and then gathering gems, much like you do in the original Istanbul. There is no movement of workers, there are not a, a plethora of actions as in the original game. It's a much more streamlined, simple game. Let me show you how this works, we'll come on back after that. And I'll tell you what I think of it and how it compares to the original game. So here's what the game looks like set up for three players. Each player is going to be given one more coin than the previous player. So we have uh, player one, the starting player, second player, third player over here. They each have a crystal as well. And the objective of the game is to get six of the gems out here. Uh, at the end of the round in which someone gets to six, whoever has the most of those is going to be the winner of the game. And so on your turn, you are going to, first of all, check if you have any income that you would get from the towels down here. Obviously, nothing to worry about yet. And then you take your five dice and you roll them. Having rolled those, you may spend a crystal as many times as you want to, to re-roll some or all of them. And uh, then once you are done doing that, you are allowed to carry out two actions. The actions are on the board as well as a couple that uh, are tied to the tiles and tied to the cards, as well as gathering money. They're all right here. Everyone has one of these sheets to explain to you what you can do on your turn. And so let's say this is my role here. I could choose to use this um, uh, die to get money. And so I could spend this one die and take two lira and put that in my supply. If I had more than one die showing that for a single action, I could spend them all and take four lira. I could choose to use the card symbols here, in this case, two of them together, to reveal two cards and keep one and use that one. And that would be my two actions and I would be done. And then the five dice are passed to the next player who is going to again worry about income, then roll the dice and go through their two actions. So let's take a look here at the board so you can see everything you can do. So if you could discard a pair of dice showing the same resource. So in this case, let's say I have two of the blue symbols here and I discard both of those. I can take a matching resource from the pile and I could spend this later on uh, the same way I would spend one of the die faces. So this could later on give me a blue face that I generate myself. So I could save, two, turn two into one that can be saved. Two different ones get me another crystal, which again are used for rerolls. Three different ones get me a brown resource here. That just means it's wild. I can use it as any of the four colors that show up on the dice. Four different ones get me two resources, any two I want. For the money symbols, as I showed you, you get the two lira. For the cards, you will draw as many as uh, you have rolled, and then you get to pick one and use it. If you uh, do this and match the resource costs needed at the top of the uh, tiles there, you could take that tile. I'll show you what some of those do in one second. And then down here, if you are able to satisfy what's necessary for one of the gems, you could take that gem as well. Uh, sometimes the gems will require money, which is what this is right here. So let me show you all of the different parts. Up here, I need four of the blue dice, the blue symbol, and I could take that gem there. For the next player, it shall be five. And then for the next one, it shall be six. You could do that again yourself or anyone else, but the costs do go up. And all four of these locations function the same way. Over here, you'll be using, using resources to gather those gems. The very first one simply requires one of each color, and you'll take that. The next one now requires one of each color and one other thing, anything else, and so on for the following ones. Over here on the, on the other side, it will be with money. You'll need money to acquire those, and so the first one will cost 10. Once you've taken that, the next revealed value is 12. 
then 14, then 16, and so on, up the, uh, up the scale. And then the tiles themselves, at the bottom, if you acquire, let's say, this tile, you get an extra action. You'll be taking three actions on your turn. This lets you uh, take and utilize a card at the beginning of your turn during the income phase. This lets you roll an extra die from now on for six dice. This means that whenever you do the money action, you'll take the corresponding token. That is the same as that. And this one, once again, the corresponding token when you take the money action. Also, if you get to five of these tiles in front of you, you'll be able to do this once in the game, and that's another way to get one of those gems. The cards themselves, they're, they are going to come in two different varieties. There are some that let you do something, and if you cannot do it or choose not to do it, well, you can take a single Lira instead, such as this one here that says you could discard two of the uh, these tokens here, the brown tokens, and take six Lira. If not, just take one. And there's several like that. This one, for example, says discard three of the wild tokens and get one of each, or take one Lira. The other kind of card lets you do something and everyone else do something a little worse. So in this case, you would get this token here and three of the coins. Everyone else gets the token or the coins. And we've got a few like that. So for example, this card here lets you take four Lira. Everybody else may discard a blue token to then take four Lira. They don't have to do it, but they have that option. And so that's what the cards do. Several things that let you manipulate and gain new abilities, new actions on your turn. And the tiles, as I said, are going to give you income at the beginning of your round, extra actions, extra dice, more crystals, things like that. All right? Uh, and that's all there is to it. So hopefully you are building up the necessary tiles you need. You are building up your pool of dice, building up money if you want to gain your tokens, your uh, gems from here, building up the necessary resources, and continue trying to do better and better so that you get to six of those gems before anyone else. That's all there is to it. That is how you play the game. So let's go back up top and let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so there it is. Let's start off with thematic ties. This one's going to get a thumbs up from me, largely not because of the, the theme is so engaging or particularly well implemented, but I do like what they were able to salvage from the original game, which is this idea, this feeling of wandering the bazaar, trying to get good deals at a, at a reduced cost quickly. Because if you wait too long, the prices of things continue going up and up. And uh, this one manages to retain that. So the heart of the game, the core of the original, is still in this one. You manage to do those things in different ways, but it still retains the feeling of uh, the original Istanbul. The aesthetics here, component quality, artwork are all fantastic. I love the dice, though I am a little bit concerned they might wear off with too much play. They are not in great dice, they are printed dice. But the cards are great, the tiles fantastic, board looks nice, components laid on that board look well. Uh, the whole thing has a, a classy, clean look to it. Love the iconography, everything in it just hums for me. So I'm very happy with that. Replayability, does it scale well? Are there new things to discover, things like that? I think uh, that the replayability is here. You will go different routes with different special abilities uh, throughout the game. Now, once you've played, say, five times or so, you will have seen everything. The game uh, will be quite familiar to you, so I do think that it will drop off considerably after that. If it hasn't really hooked you by four or five plays, it, it will not then do that. You've pretty much seen anything there is to everything there is to see here. But uh, during those first few plays, you're going to have a lot of fun finding uh, how to do the things you can do. How to avoid the popular places on the board. Because if you don't have to compete with someone, then don't. You know, go if everyone seems to be ignoring the money track, for example. Great. You can focus on that. And maybe to aid you in doing so, you can try to uh, go, uh, gather a bunch of crystals to give you re-rolls. That sort of thing. You know, you can always try to get the gem that you get from having five tiles. Because those five tiles are going to be benefiting you anyway. 
So things like that, discovering and, and finding your groove in the game can certainly be fun and lead to replayability. Game length, does it stay interesting the whole time? Is it repetitive? Things like that. I think the game is about uh, 30 minutes or so. As I said, they list 20 to 40 on the box. About, you know, between those two is, is right. And I would say for that length of time, the interest here is high. The engagement is high. You do feel like you are getting better and better at what you are attempting to do while things get harder and harder to accomplish. So that's fun. That's interesting. Having that goal, as soon as you can reach it and do so, it gets a little bit farther away from you. That's just a fun uh, feel in the game and an interesting set of mechanisms that lead it to it. So the, uh, the game length that you know, it runs out, the game rather runs out just around when you're ready to be done chasing that goal, so to speak, means that it is well-timed and interesting for the entirety of the session. Ease of play, is it fiddly? Are there any extraneous rules? Is it easy to teach? I would say it's fairly easy to teach. The game is not a, uh, it's not just a, a, theme usage of the original. They do retain some of those concepts and, and feel, especially, and ideas in the game. That means that to someone who is not at all familiar with the original game, there might be a few rules here that you have to go, oh, right, there's cards too. Okay, I forgot about the cards. Or, you know, the towels across the bottom. Or, you know, there, there's quite a bit going on. How you get the gems, though, the ultimate goal is very simple, very straightforward. Gather goods or money, buy it. It just became a little bit more expensive for whoever gets the next one. That's it. So overall, I would not say the game is fiddly. I think it is once understood, once you, you get the couple of different things uh, at play here, the game flows very well. I also like that re-rolls in this game are not automatic. So that reduces uh, downtime, you know. And so if you don't have any of those crystals that allow for re-rolls, you roll once, you're done, pick some actions out of that. That's neat, I enjoy it. And then lastly, tactics and strategy. Is it lucky, balance, are there interesting choices? It's certainly lucky, you are rolling dice, okay? So it's going to be a game that is not as strategic as the original. You're not going to have the board all laid out where you can puzzle out how to go about doing what you need to do. Even in that game, the other players could mess with you by ending up in a place that was inconvenient for you. But in this one, yeah, the dice rolling is going to have your plans not go according to what they originally were. But you can react to that. You can mitigate that role. You can also have, you have so many choices that you will be able to do interesting things on your turn. Even if it's something as simplistic as take two dice and turn them into a future locked die, if you would. One of those tokens. So I found it engaging tactically rich you do have a little bit of a plan because you're working towards something and then you have to react with tactics uh, to what's happening in the game as far as interaction goes though that's pretty minor there are those cards that let you you know that allow other players to do something but you're all you know largely not really going to be messing with the other players that's not really a problem the original one didn't do that very much either but you know you are trying to just have your engine go a little bit faster than other people so that the timing works out and they don't steal what you were hoping to get. Overall, I really enjoyed it. As I said in the intro, I'm a fan of the original game. I like that better, still. I think it's a more robust, more engaging game, but it is not 30 minutes. And it does have quite a few more rules than this one here does. They, they did a marvelous job, I would say, though, retaining the feel and the concept of the original game while simplifying and streamlining all of its uh, all of its parts, all of its aspects. So this one I really enjoyed. It's a keeper for me. If you like the first one especially, I think you're going to like this as a way to fill in uh, and get a similar vibe in a much shorter amount of time. If you didn't like the first one because it was too heady, there was too much going on, maybe it outstayed its welcome for you, then maybe you should look at this one because it does manage to do something that the original doesn't quite do. Uh, still, I do, as I said, like this one uh, uh, not as uh, not as well. I like the original rather better than this one. Still, this gets a seal of excellence from me. I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna hang on to it, as I said. 
Look into it. Istanbul the Dice Game is a very well-crafted, enjoyable game based on a game it borrows from but does not outright replace. And so both could exist in your collection easily. So there you go. Istanbul the Dice Game. Thanks for checking this out with me. I'm Z Garcia, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.